ADHD, or Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. Am I talking to you? Am I talking to me? I got ADHD. It's about anything. It's about everything. It's ADHD. Welcome back to ADHD with me, Travis Mills. Uh, today, my guest is Mark Doner, a longtime friend. I was a guest on the first episode of your podcast. Living large. Living large. <laughs> uh, and now you get to return the favor and, and be on mine, man. Thank you. It's an honor. Yeah, you're on my first episode. Can I ask, why did you choose ADHD? Do you have ADHD? I do have ADHD. Um, it's something that I've had my whole life, obviously. And I feel like uh, a lot of people have ADHD. Yeah, tons of people. Um, but, you know, this is something that I had the idea for. I actually created created a show. It was like a pilot. I shot a pilot for this. It was like 15 minutes. Uh, and it was called ADHD with Travis Mills had a couple different titles. Um, and then I was like, okay, this is super dope. Nothing. I didn't sell the show. Like I, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't get anyone to buy it. Um, and then, you know, life happened. And when I was starting my podcast, I was going to, I forget what I was going to call the podcast, but I was like, that's fucking whack. And I was like, <laughs> I'm just going to call it ADHD. That's um, dope. And it was the greatest decision that I've made in a long time. Yeah, I like your sign. You got the pills. Thank you, man. Yeah, I feel yeah. like, you know, you had to, I had to, I had to stunt one time. That's pretty dope. And get the sign. Um, real quick, guys, if you're not subscribed to the podcast, subscribe real quick. Hit us with five stars. If you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe to the channel. Drop a comment below so I can chat with you. Mark Donor, man, first thing I want to comment on is you've been in the gym like fucking crazy, dude. Yeah, bro. You've been waking up at like five in the morning. 5.30, yeah. <laughs> what, <laughs> what inspired all of this? Uh... A, my breakup. <laughs> okay. I went through the same thing. Yeah. Like, I feel like, and, and it's very indicative. Like you can see someone, you know, if you don't hang out with someone every day and you're, you know, you're following them on social media though. And you're kind of just catching up through that. I can always tell when someone's going through something because they start eating really good and they start working out a lot. And they post way more. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> to, to prove that they're living their best life. <laughs> exactly. No. But I feel like, dude, it's it's cathartic. You know what I mean? It you is. get to get all of that aggression and all of those emotions out in the gym and you feel better about yourself. It, for me, it certainly helped, you know, me build self-confidence that I had never had before throughout like my early 20s. Right. So, I mean, I wasn't, a, I wasn't happy, right? With not, not just my whatever breakup, but... I wasn't happy with the way I looked in the mirror, you know, like I looked at myself and I got on the scale and for the first time in my life, I weighed over 200 pounds and I just, I wasn't in shape. I had no muscles. So like two, I should weigh 200 cause I'm six foot three. You were big I, dudes. Yeah. I, I'm not like muscular. So if I had muscle, I would probably weigh 200, but I was like 207, just had love handles. My back was fat. Like my stomach was fat. Um, and I was like, damn, bro, this breakup can either send me down a dark path. I could start, you know, going and drinking and boozing and partying if I, but that's not the right answer for me. You know yep. what I'm saying? Like, I'm always like trying to improve and get better. Yeah. And there's like, like two ways that it could go. Right. You know, you could go like for better or for yeah. worse. So I was like, I got to improve out of this. And it started with waking up at 530. And the reason I set the goal of waking up at 530 is because I need something to focus on that was difficult. I needed like a task to start my day that was very hard to do. Do you, and do you watch Mark Wahlberg? Or I've like, seen that he wakes up at like four. Okay. I was going to say, is this like yeah, Mark Wahlberg? I can't inspired? do that. Okay. Um, I did see that, but I think it was just important for me to start the day with something difficult to do. And waking up at 530 is something hard to do. Oh, yeah. And I would wake up really, it'd be really hard. And I would post Instagram stories. So I would hold myself accountable. accountable. Like if I don't I've wake up. I've seen you do that. Yeah. You post at like midnight and yeah. you're like, if I don't wake up tomorrow, I'm a I'm pussy. A pussy. <laughs> so it forces me to wake up. And yeah, it's just something about like focusing on something when your mind is obviously on the other thing. Yep. And I would wake up, I'd make my bed, I'd make breakfast, I'd go to the gym. And by 8 a.m., you know, I was, I already accomplished four or five things. The hardest my, part of your day. Yeah. And it was, and I can't even lift at night, man. Like I was on set last week. I tried to lift at night and it was so hard for me because I was just exhausted. So I feel like starting my day with that is like the best thing ever. And then I started to do a meal plan and I've dropped, I dropped 24 pounds in three weeks, which was Jesus. really fast. Like half of it's probably water weight. But right now I'm down 29 pounds in six weeks. Wow. Yeah. And who's, a, do you have like a fitness coach? Do you have like a nutrition, like a no. nutritionist? You're doing this all by yourself? Doing it all by myself. I have a, an assistant who cooks all my food. She meal preps at the beginning of the week. It look, it's, it's crazy because my fridge is just filled with like 40 meals. Containers I, and shit? Yeah, containers. They're reusable for those of you that ask. I keep getting shit for that. But yeah, I eat six times a day and it's kind of crazy because I, you would think the more you eat, like the fatter you get, but 
my metabolism is just so fast right now, eating six times a day. And it's like, it what kind sucks. Of stuff are you eating? Uh, I start off with six egg whites and one yolk with a cup of oatmeal in the morning and a cup of coffee. I don't do any pre-workout because that fucks with my heart a lot. You get um, like heart jitters yeah, and shit? Yeah, bro. <laughs> heart palpitations? It's too much caffeine. So I stick to coffee. And then just throughout the day, basically one protein, one vegetable, and, and one carb. And then the later meals, I don't have any carbs. Um, and then I'll do like a protein shake after I work out. So like six times a day. That's insane. Intense. And, and are I do, you running? Are you running a lot at the gym? No, nah, actually, I don't run at all. I do 30 minutes of uphill incline walking. Uh, you got to get the ass right. You got to get the ass yeah, to pop yeah. out. You know what I'm saying? I got no ass. <laughs> uh, but I actually, I wear like a 10 pound weighted vest when I do it. And I also wear like a, a sweat thing around my waist, uh, like my whatever What's belly. What's a sweat thing? It's like a thing that makes you sweat more. Really? It's like a little belt that like sweats. Yeah. Oh, damn. I need so to you, get like, you sweat those. around your abs a little bit more, lose that water weight. Okay. Um, I do that 30 minutes and go hard at the gym. And then sometimes when I was lost to 24 pounds in three weeks, I was playing basketball every single night. So nice. I was cardio twice a day. Um, but like the basketball, I would literally only do it to like sprint up and down the court. Like even if my team had a breakaway, like I was running, you know, like it was an exercise rather than for fun. And how are you fitting in real life? Cause you know, you still have to, you still have to work. You still have to make videos. Yeah, you still yeah. have to have, you know, honestly, I took a little bit of a break and I was just sticking to my podcast. And I think my podcast was therapeutic cause I could talk to people and like talk to the guests about their relationships and what they yeah. were going through. And I was like, Oh, so sick. It's like find a common ground. Yeah. I'm not the only person that fucking deals with this kind of shit. Podcast uh, is called living large. You can yeah. get anywhere you, uh, you listen <laughs> to podcasts. It's also on YouTube as well. It's actually, yeah, it's finally taking off too, which I stuck with it for a few months. Um, you know, what's crazy is I heard, uh, I read somewhere that most podcasts end within the first seven episodes. Really? Yeah. Like people start podcasts and, they'll stop. and then they'll stop before they hit seven episodes or like seven for some reason, like that number. Well, it's, it's tough. Cause you don't have like a lot of viewers at first, you know, but it takes three months and I'm on three months right now. And it's finally, I'm doing like over every episode over 150,000 right now. It's crazy, man. Congratulations. Yeah. So you just got to stick with it. Like anything in life, like I, you can't quit. And what made you want to start the podcast? Uh, I hosted in college. I went to college for hosting like broadcast journalism. I wanted to be on ESPN and like, I don't know. I'm good at talking, I guess. Yeah. You're pretty, you're pretty good. I don't like talking about myself. I like talking, like asking other people questions, you know? Okay. This is going to be horrible for you. No, it's fine. It's going to be like, like the worst hour <laughs> of your life, dude. I've gotten used to it, but I just, I don't know. I hate talking about myself. And what's like, what is, uh, what is like, when you have a guest come in, what are some of the things that like you plan? Do you, do you like write lists and shit? And like you, you plan out your conversations for your podcast? I did, uh, just cause I was like, I gotta be so prepared for this shit. But recently, no, I just go in with the conversation and I have a few bullet points. Like if something's going on, I want to hit those, like I'll bring those up and try to weave them into the conversation, but everything's basically improv. And like, I like just to keep it raw and have a real conversation rather than like, ask facts like, Hey, you have a script and you shit did that you this. follow. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Do you feel like what's more fulfilling for you doing the podcast or making videos? Oh, I think it's all in waves because making skits was a wave for me. Like yeah. I still make skits and I really enjoy skits. That's the fun. first thing I saw you from was like your yeah. dick in the box present <laughs> skit. <laughs> that shit went viral. You know bro. What I'm saying it did. Yeah. <laughs> I love skits with unexpected endings. Um, yeah, because you would think my dick was going to come out of the box. Exactly. But it was puppies. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't know. I like making people laugh. And then I went over to the vlogs and that got me a, able to like showcase my talent, I guess, if you will, like filming, editing, directing, all those types of things. And the podcast is just another wave. And the reason I like podcasts and I think that they're taking off is because they're super raw. They're even more raw and authentic than a vlog. You know, like people are coming to these mediums to find something that they can relate to, something honest and I feel like that's what you get with a podcast. Like it's a live conversation where 100%, yeah. you can't really beat around the bush. And it's like, I've opened up so much more on my podcast about my problems, about life, about my successes than I ever would talk about in a vlog. You know what I'm saying? So I think like the realism of it and like even on Netflix shit that's popping right now is documentaries, you mm -hmm. know, like people are looking to like learn, I feel like, and, and really cut out all the bullshit. Like vlogs became bullshit. Like, let's be honest. It was clickbait. It was like high energy. Like that doesn't exist. This is, this exists. Real conversations, like real life. hundred percent. Do you, do you see yourself ever going back to making videos like that? Oh yeah, of course. I was just taking a break just, and honestly, like I tried to make a vlog, uh, but it's just fucking weird, man. Cause like me so and my girl- like getting back into the water and yeah, shit. Yeah. Cause like every video I'd be like, 
oh, here's me and my girlfriend. Now I'm like, oh, here's me. <laughs> like, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> That's why you get a dog, dude. You get yeah, a dog, the you know? content goes up for that. <laughs> you get a, you get the puppy or you get a cat yeah. and then you're good to go. But then the responsibility comes up. Very true. And then, you know, you can't work out for like two hours a day. Exactly. Because you yeah. get a, well, you walk the dog. That, that becomes a new cardio. Yeah, that's that the becomes 30 a minutes. New, the new cardio. <laughs> you know, and then you have lifelong companionship. Yeah. Um, and there, do you listen to a, a lot of other podcasts? I don't listen to any podcasts. Oh, damn. Yeah. I think I, and this is, this goes for even when I was vlogging, I wasn't watching other people's vlogs. I just like to focus on creating more so than consuming. Of course, I'll like pick out my favorite. Like I love David Dobrik. Like, of course. I don't I've listen to him his, on the pod. I don't listen to his podcast, but I watch every single one of his videos. Just his videos are so good. They're dude. so good. They're so good. Weird. Uh, I had him on the second episode uh, and I was talking to him about advice for, you know, up and coming YouTubers or vloggers or, or kids that wanted to start creating content. And he said, the most important thing uh, when creating content is just do something unique and original to you. Right. He's like, you know, if you try to copy <clears throat> someone else's formula for videos, right. you try to do something, you know, that, that you're watching, you know, someone who has success is doing, it's just never going to work out the same way. And that really resonated with me. It's like, yeah, something could be popping, but if you're just trying to emulate it. Right. You're not, you know, it's not going to be genuine. It's not going to be Which authentic. is what, when I first started making videos, you, you, you obviously have inspiration, right? Like I had inspiration from Casey Neistat. I had inspiration from Devin Supertramp and I had inspiration from David Dobrik even when I first started making vlogs. And what you do is you, you take things that you enjoy from each person and you make them your own rather than me copying David Dobrik completely. Like incorporating a few things that he does really well in my vlogs, incorporating a few things that Casey does well in my vlogs and, and Devin Supertramp and putting those all into one, that becomes you, right? That becomes your vlog, even though you're still drawing inspiration. It's so hard to be truly original. Well, everything's been done. I mean, just everything, e everything in every field, again. in every field, music, yeah. you know, film, like everything's been done. It's just a reiteration of something that is, that has once been here. Right. Before. We're on like Fast and the Furious number nine already. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> <laughs> and there's, I, I there's love been that four you stars like born. Vin Diesel film. Yeah. I was, okay, I was gonna say stars born. Yeah, but you brought up like Vin Diesel and the Ronas. Yeah, you know. <laughs> so yeah, I mean everything. It's just like whatever. Yeah. What I find so interesting is that we're almost going backwards in the way that we consume media because you know when radio was first invented, families gathered around this box to sit there for hours and, and listen to this dude talk, mm -hmm. you know, through these airwaves. And we moved away from that. And, you know, we wanted to see pictures moving and we wanted to see colors and right. then we wanted to go and see, you know, films and shit. Uh, and then, you know, we got obsessed with reality television and now everything is moving back to yeah. that like original art form of just people having conversations. It is. Yeah. It's really interesting that, cause I never thought like, I don't listen to podcasts, but that's just me. Like I'd rather listen to music. Um, but there's some, like, I, I listen to Gary Vee. Okay. You, so I really, he was on your show too. Of course, I've had Gary on my show. He was my first guest. Um, and Gary, what's cool about Gary's podcast is he'll take audio excerpts from his videos that he posts like on YouTube. real life, right? Exactly. Yeah. And then he'll put it on his podcast. Like with Gary, you never know what kind of episodes you're going to get. Right, right. Because sometimes it'll be an hour of him speaking at some fucking keynote. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes it'll be like 10 minutes of him talking to some kid on the street. I was listening to him when I was really struggling in terms of where I wanted to go with my career. Mm -hmm. Like I would get on the treadmill and I'd throw on Gary V and just listen to him. Like he's just so straightforward. And that's yeah. what I told you about like being raw and authentic. Like Gary V will literally be like, stop being fucking lazy. You know what I'm saying? Like to your face. And that's what people are trying to consume. But it's interesting because when I first started watching vlogs, it was kind of an alone thing. And I know now like people watch that shit together. Like that's something that they find common ground in. Like, oh, you watch him? Like me too. Like, let's watch them together. I didn't used to do that. I thought I was, I was like embarrassed at the fact that I watched YouTube videos. Really? Yeah. Like I would sit in my room in college watching Casey Neistat. And if someone would knock on my door, I'd like shut your it's laptop. Like porn. And shit. Yeah. It's like, are you watching porn? I'm like, no, no, it's Casey Neistat. <laughs> this, this isn't mine. <laughs> this isn't mine. Literally. I, I was embarrassed, but it's changed. Wow. Do you, uh, do you like reading ads? Like the ads on your podcast? Mm, I'll let you do that one. No, no, no. I'm saying, <laughs> no, no. I'm saying like, do you, do, is it weird for you? No, no, not at all. You like it? Yeah. Because I feel like with YouTube, you know, it's just, it's something that you don't really have to think about. You it's can expected. Just like check a box, you know, and like. Yeah, but ads on a podcast, like you have to have sponsors. Every radio show has a sponsor. That's, this is a radio show. It's like an accepted thing. Damn, you're changing my perspective just one second at a time. Yeah. I love that. Plus people know in today's day and age, like social media stars, like 
they got to do what they got to do to make the guap, you know? The guap. <laughs> <laughs> well, with that being said, it's fucking ad time, baby. <laughs> Oh, uh, today's episode of the podcast is brought to you by Blinkist. Um, the problem is that in today's age, it can be hard to find the time to sit down and learn more. It's not easy when the likes of social media can be so addictive and time consuming, like watching YouTube videos. So you may think you don't have the time to read a book or to develop yourself, but there is an app that I highly recommend. It's called Blinkist. Blinkist is the only app that takes the best key takeaways, the need to know information from thousands of nonfiction books and condenses them down into just 15 minutes. So you can read or listen to. Blinkist is made of busy people like you who want to get the main points of the books quickly without reading the entire book with the audio f- feature. Blinkist makes it so easy to finish four books a day. I've read and, well, okay, I've listened to these books and I highly recommend that you check them out. Uh, I've read The Seven ha- Habits of Highly Effective People. Uh, it's by Stephen Covey. Um, I've read How to Win Friends and Influence Influence People by Dale Carnegie. That book is crazy because it was written so long ago and most of it remains true today. Like you can literally read that book that was written in I don't know, 1900 mm-hmm. and that shit still rings true today, especially with social media. Uh, and right now for a limited time, Blinkist has a special offer just for our audience. Go to Blinkist.com slash ADHD to start your free seven day trial. That's Blinkist spelled B-L-I-N-K-I-S-T. Blinkist.com slash ADHD to start your free seven day trial. Blinkist.com slash ADHD. And I got to shout out BetterHelp. They are a returning sponsor sponsor of the podcast this week. Is there something that interferes with your happiness or is preventing you from achieving your goals? BetterHelp Online Counseling is there for you. You can connect with a professional counselor in a safe and private online environment. It's convenient. You can get help on your own time and at your own pace. You can schedule secure video or phone sessions, plus chat and text with your therapist. Anything you share is confidential. If you're not happy with your counselor for any reason, you can change at any time for no additional fee. Uh, It's available on desktop, mobile web, Android, and iOS. There's a broad expertise in the network, which may not be locally available in many areas. Uh, it's secure, it's convenient, and it's professional, and it's affordable. It is not a crisis line, but best of all, it's a truly affordable option. ADHD with Travis Mills listeners get 10% off your first month with discount code ADHD. So get started today. Go to betterhelp.com slash ADHD, fill out a questionnaire, help them assess your needs, find out exactly what you're looking for. That's betterhelp.com slash a D H D. I like the book one. Yeah, dude. I just read two books. You did? Yeah. This goes back to like me trying to better myself. The gym was one of those things. And then reading. Cause I feel what like books did you read? <clears throat> I read the subtle art of not giving a fuck. Isn't that book amazing? Amazing. I just had him on my podcast. Oh really? Yeah. It's coming out May 13th. If you guys want to stay tuned, he's coming out with another book you, called you record that far in advance. Uh, he was in town. So in his book's not coming out till May 14th. So, uh, I wanted to get him on. Damn. So you, you planned it. Yeah. He's That's got nice. this new book called everything is fucked coming out. And what's his, what's his name? The author's Mark name? Mark Manson. Mark Manson. Yeah. Really dope, dude. Yeah, that um, book is uh, that book's incredible. Of course, yeah. Changed my life because I was in a dark path. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, damn, this dude, literally, like like I said, he did, it went through the same thing as me. Um, and then I read I Used to Be a Miserable Fuck, and that one helped me out a lot. Of did well, he write that well. as well? No, nah, someone else. Okay, it just had the word fuck in it. So yeah, yeah. I thought it's Everybody's like a, going that it's route It's a continuing now. theme. He started the trend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of uh, some other incredible books. Dragon Rider. <laughs> What's that? Just like a fiction book that it's I like read. some Harry Potter shit. Yeah, yeah like <laughs> hella long ago, like fifth grade. Um, I'm reading this book right now from good to great. Okay. Um, that's really dope. It's more of like, it's about, uh, it's like what separates, you know, the top like fortune 500 companies from, from other businesses that, you know, aren't there. Mm-hmm. Um, Man, I read, I've read so many. Oh, I just read this dude, David Goggins. Um, he, he has this book called Can't Hurt Me. And it's fucking incredible, man. And for what one thing, like I've never been able to listen uh, to audiobooks or anything while I work out because, you know, I need right. music. That's one book that I, I can listen to when I'm fucking running, like miles. Wow. And it'll keep me inspired. Uh, and this dude's story is insane, man. He at one time weighed like 300 pounds. He was an exterminator. Um, he grew up in Indiana, like broke. His dad was like a pimp and like, you know, abused them and shit. Uh, him and his mom left when, when he was young. Um, he never really fit in, got to the point where he was weighing like 300 pounds. He was a pet exterminator. He hated his life and he watched this commercial on TV 
and it was for the Navy SEALs. And he saw these dudes going through boot camp, and he's like, I want to fucking, I want to do this. Mm-hmm. Um, went in and became like uh, a Navy SEAL, and then wanted to go do like the highest echelon, you know, of of whatever that program was. And um, he failed that shit three times. He failed buds, like the crazy intensive training. Mm-hmm. And like one time he got to like the very last day, but like his fucking leg was broken. So he's running on like broken ankles and like duct taping mm-hmm. his fucking shins. Uh, and you know, got sent home, come back, failed a swimming or some crazy test, got sent home, came back. And, um, and now he's a motivational speaker. He's just a fucking badass dude. That's like the crazy thing. Like, like it all goes back to like wanting to help yourself. Like you, if you don't want to help yourself or you won't like, you're never going to get help. Like you can't help people that don't want to be helped. He's very no bullshit too, which yeah. like is why I think, I think that you'd love it because he's like, you know, stop being a bitch. Yeah. He's like, like, of course shit is going to suck. He's like, life is not perfect. Right. So, you know, you have to do the things that you hate, but you're going to, it's going to make you a stronger person. Right. And that's what, uh, the subtle are not giving a fuck talks about. It's like, if, if you want to grow, you got to go through pain, man. And if you want to succeed, you got to fail, you know, like you got to be able to get better every single day. You know? Well, in the seven habits of highly effective people, I mean, waking up early is definitely one of those things because you have those, you know, those hours to do whatever the fuck you want. You're not mm-hmm. getting emails. You're not getting phone That's calls. The reason, yeah. You're not getting tweets. You're not checking, you know, Instagram and shit. You got those hours to do whatever the hell. There's you no distractions. Do. That's why they're highly productive. Cause I was always wondering that, like, why do you have to get up so early? But like literally everyone's sleeping, you know, do you go to bed earlier now though? Nah. Really? Yeah. (laughs) You still stay up late? Well, I eat six times a day. So like I have energy throughout the day. I don't really crash. It's crazy. That's insane. I need to get on your, on your meal prep shit. Yeah. That's the one thing that I'm fucking horrible about. Cause like, I'll be so strict about, you know, taking care of myself and working out. But the second that like, I'm in an inconvenient, like time slot to go and do something, I'll, I'll just eat like shit. You well, know? that's why you just heat it up in the microwave. It's so quick. And Does like, it taste good. So yeah. Really? Yeah, dude. I saw you making like, sam- you, you had like salmon, salmon and broccoli, Yeah. but I thought about like microwaving that salmon. It smells terrible. I could smell it through the phone. Yeah, yeah. It's like just horrible. through watching it. I've actually gotten five people already on the meal prep. Damn it. Yeah, bro. I'm going to be reading it's Mark Donor's meal prep ads <laughs> on like two podcasts. Yeah, yeah. It's a movement, bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely want to pick your brain about that. I just saw you on Logan Paul's podcast, yeah. uh, Impulsive. Yep. I think I'm about to go do that tomorrow. Really? Yeah. He hit me up today. What are you guys going to talk about? Shit, I don't fucking know. <laughs> Should I call him first and be like, yo, dude, what are we going to talk yeah, about? Yeah, I don't know. He hit me with some pretty, like... He hit us with questions. He hit you guys with questions. There's you did no it with back- George. Yeah. Uh, you did it with George and, and Johannes. Y- yeah, yeah. Yeah. We used to all hang out at 1600 Vine back in the day when Vine was popping and we all lived there and kind of, you know, we've all gone our separate ways, but we still keep in touch. We all live in Encino now. So like we try to hang out as much as possible. But like I said, we all just went our separate ways and career wise, you know, you were also in his flat earth yeah, uh, for a mockumentary. second. Yeah. <laughs> I just went over there and he's like, I just like laid in a circle for 20 minutes. Did you know what was, what that yeah, yeah. footage was going to be for? Yeah. He told me. What did he like describe it as? He was like, yeah, I'm making this f- f- mockumentary about the flat earth convention. And I just want you to be in this like little bit. And I was like, all right, cool. Like, that's the thing that I missed. Like we used to just create content all the time. Like there's no questions asked. Like, all right, cool. I'll be in it. You know, isn't it great that like all this time can go by and you guys can still yeah. do the shit. I mm-hmm. mean, and you know, like politics aside, industry aside, you guys like get to get, get back to like where it all started from. Right. I right. thought that was really fucking cool. When I yeah. Saw and it. it wasn't like a nostalgic feeling being on the podcast and like reminiscing on all the memories and shit. I bet. Cause we've done some pretty crazy stuff and we talked about it. I don't know why, but <laughs> do you go back and like watch old vlogs and be like, Oh shit. I forgot that this even happened. Yeah. Like, like when I, like I look back at them sometimes for memories and I also look back for like places I've been just to remember where it was. Some of the vlogs I watch, I'm like, I don't even remember this day at all. Cause that's how many times I was doing it. But yeah, I walk, I look back and I saw how skinny I was and young I was at the start of my vlogs. And like, I was like, damn man, I fucking aged. How old are you now? 25. Okay. I'm 29, bro. I'm about to be 30 in two weeks. But when you film your life every day, you see the progression. Chill out. (laughs) Yeah. But yeah, I used to be in a lot better shape. And so that, that was kind of like, like when I was going through all that stuff, I was watching old videos because I was making that video, you know, to let the fans know. And I was like, damn, like I really lost myself. Damn, that's crazy. I, I wa- when, when you put that video out, I watched it and I had a lot of respect for you because I don't think I could do, I don't think I could do that. Yeah. It was, it was 
editing that video, man, I fucking cried my eyes out. I'm not going to try to hide that. Like that was the hardest video I've ever had to make. I just sat at the computer looking at fucking two years of memories, trying to pick the best ones. It took forever. It was hard. Um, and even my brother was like, why'd you make that video? Like, what was the point of that? But for me, it was, uh, it helped me. It was like closure. It's therapeutic. Yeah, it was like, damn, we had a, a lot of really good memories. And I could walk away from this, like, knowing that I did my best. You know what I'm saying? Like, watching the videos and seeing, you know, the times we had, the memories we had. And the fact that I was able to film it, like, it made me truly appreciate like what the relationship was and and how far I've come in terms of being able to care about someone else. Cause I've never had to do that, you know, and being able to love and like she, she gave, she got all the emotions out of me and all that stuff and made me, cause I'm from Ohio, man. I'm very close minded and moving out here has really changed my pr- perspective on life on uh, just other people in general, like hearing other people's stories and just understanding like everyone has their own path that they've come from. And I think the relationship taught me that. And even reading the book really helped me like understand, like, I just need to, to take this as a learning experience. And, you know, it matured me a lot. hundred percent. Now that, you know, you've taken a little break from shooting videos. Is it nice not having to bring a camera with you everywhere you go? Yeah. Yeah. Is your right arm like, does it feel lighter? Yeah. No, (laughs) it's like, I used to use my left arm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, it's just nice being able to live you know, without filming it and not, my brain was so focused all the time on what's next. What's the next video? What's the next clickbait? What's the next, this, that, that. And I didn't live man. And that's the one thing I regret. Like I, at the same time, like I love the fact that I can look back and see my life the past two years, yeah. but I also regret the fact that I felt like I lived for my vlog. You know what I'm saying? Damn, that's deep. Like it'd be cool to have someone film my life or like dedicate date, but filming my life every single day it went by so fast, bro. Well, not even that, but like, yeah, you're filming everything and then whatever you go out and do, you know, you're doing some, some activity, but then you come home and then you got to sit there, upload the footage right. and then edit it and mm-hmm. curate it and make it perfect right. and then post and then do it all. Like, yeah, you're kind of stuck day. in this cycle. And I edited my vlogs for the first like 60 or so. And then I got an editor cause it was just not sustainable. Um, so I had editors in the UK that would help me out. And even then, man, like, yeah, I got to, I got a little bit of free time at night, but I was still focused so hard every single day on like the competition and all that. And it really fucked my brain. And that's when I started to listen to Gary V because I was going down a dark path and I was just like, where do I go from here? You know, my views aren't as good as they used to be. Like, I'm like, I can't come up with ideas. Did that affect you? Like, like seeing, you know, like, did you f- hyper-focus on views? Yeah, it was bad. It was, and, and, and to be honest, I've never talked about mental health. I've never been told what mental health is. I never really like look into it or whatever. But then I start seeing every YouTuber like saying, I'm taking a break from my mental health. I'm taking a break from my mental health. Like my mental health isn't strong. And I'm like, damn, like what the fuck is going on with all of us? Yeah. Like then it makes me question me like, oh shit, do I have mental health problems? And like, this is nothing I've ever even thought about. You know what I'm saying? I've just like lived by my, like my dad and been like fucking stop being a pussy. You know what I'm saying? Like, so then it made, it got me, I got in my own head. Like, do I have something wrong with me? Like, is it like, do I have anxiety? Do I have depression? Like, but it's, so I try to stay away from like watching that kind of depressing content in a way. And I just like, cause I was, I was like, oh yeah, like, my views are going down, but look at that person's views are going down too. And like, they're just like open that they have mental health issues. Like maybe I have mental health issues. That's, and I was coming up with all these excuses and reasons as to why my channel wasn't doing well. And at the end of the day, like what I've learned now that I've been able to take a break, I've read a couple books is everything starts with you, man. Mm. Like you can't blame other people. I can't blame, you know, my, my girlfriend, ex-girlfriend, for the relationship, you know, I can only take responsibility for what I did and what I didn't do in the relationship. And, and same goes to, you know, the YouTube, like I was not the same person. Like you could tell, like I wasn't as happy in the video. It it felt like a job. I wasn't projecting the happiness that I once had. You almost had to like clock in. Exactly. And that's my fault that the views went down. It's not YouTube's algorithm. It's not the fact that they're demonetizing shit. It's me. 
And that's when I was like, damn, I, and that's where my content has shifted now. And like, I feel like that's why my podcasts are doing much better. It's because I just am being me now. I'm being me again. And I'm not worried about what people say and what content YouTube wants and just making what the fuck I want to make, you know? And for anybody listening who, you know, might be going through the same shit, what are some of the things that you did besides working out? That's obviously a huge part, but that helped you get back into that headspace. Oh man. Just surrounding myself with good people. Like really, like my boy George is always like- You guys have been friends for a long time. Yeah. We've been friends for like four or five years. Just like good, positive people who like encourage you and in it in truth hurts right and like having a conversation with my dad he's like mark you're not and it really fucking pissed me off like i was on the phone with my dad and he's like what are you doing man um and i'm like what do you mean yeah he's like do you want to move back to ohio because you're not like what's the point you're out there you know like why are you out there you're not fucking doing anything he's like you're not booked in any acting jobs you're not doing anything and i'm like fuck you dad like i've done this this and that got very defensive like but he was right, man. Like I was so much hungrier three years ago and he just, he sees the shift and I'm sure the fans saw the shift too. And it's like, I got comfortable. Mm. I got comfortable in life. I got comfortable with making videos. I knew what worked. I wasn't pushing myself creatively. And like, I needed that honest person in my life, my father to be like, get your fucking shit together or you're coming home. Like, I mean, obviously I'm, I make my own money and pay my own bills, but like he put that in my head. Like, what's the reason you're out there? If you're not, he just asked you that question that you didn't want to be asked. Right. And I got defensive and it, it it's just like that tough love. And you need people in your life that are honest, that give you tough love. Like, and to be honest, like I, I learn, I know like a lot of people need to have constructive criticism to learn. I don't need to be told what I'm doing. Right. I know what I'm doing. Right. I need to be told what I need to work on. Dude, I'm the same way. Like you, I don't need compliments. I don't need anything. I need to be told what can I do better? Yep. Because I always want to improve. And even like when I was not happy with my own body, like I still would get the validation from my friends. Like, oh no, bro, you look good. Like I want someone to be like, no, bro, you're fucking fat. You need to lose weight. You know what I'm saying? All right, chill out, bro. You're (laughs) 6'4". I don't think you've ever been like- I mean, I I was not happy. Yeah, you just, yeah, you weren't happy. I wasn't in shape. I didn't have- Anything. You couldn't ball out every single day. Right. Exactly. I would puff, huff and puff. So when I started playing basketball, when I was out of shape, bro, I couldn't even play for 30 minutes. Now I can go three hours running the whole time. It's like you need people that give you tough love. And that's something I used to have even like when I live with Logan, Paul and Jake Paul. I remember one day and I said this on Logan's podcast, Jake, I had my shirt off and Jake's like, bro, you need to lose weight. Like I need that. I need someone to tell me I need to do better. Because, or say I can't do better because I need that motivation. I need to pull something to just do better. And that was what my dad did. And like, he was right. Like three years ago, I was much hungrier. Like I was living in Logan's closet. I didn't want to live there anymore. I wanted to get out. I wanted to do my own thing. I wanted to live my life, not Logan's life. And I worked my fucking ass off to get to where I was. And then I got comfortable. You know, I was, I knew what I needed to do to make a YouTube video. I knew what I needed to do to make a skit. It was, there was no pushing myself creatively And like I said, I was really mad at my dad. I screamed at him. He screamed back. We didn't talk for a couple days after that, but like, I'm I'm glad he did it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're grateful. Yeah. Yeah. I feel, dude, I'm the same way. And especially like, you know, in the beginning stages of my career, like all of my decisions and all of my like creativity came from a place of people hating me or people doubting me Mm -hmm. or people thinking that I couldn't. Right. And so I internalized all of that. And for a long time, that was like the driving force of like why I worked so hard and you know, what ultimately led me to become successful. And then when you gain that bit of success, you're You're like, like, I have it. Yeah. You just stop, you know, you're like, Oh, you know, whatever. If someone says this, it doesn't matter because I'm good here. They don't know anything. I'm the one who's successful, you know? And then that's cool for a little bit. But after, a while you know you start drinking the fucking kool-aid right and and you become complacent and you you know you get comfortable and it's like that's when you start to see the results drift away yeah you know and i'm not saying like you know be solely motivated by by like you haters know, hate or or doubt or anything but i know for me like that's a big motivating factor and and now it's just like i feel like now it's not even you know the hate or, or the disbelief. Now it's like me setting almost unrealistic goals for myself to be like, can I like, 
can I do this? Mm-hmm. Be like, I don't know if I can. Let's let's fucking find out. Right. You know, because if you set safe, safe goals that you know you can hit, like where is where's the fun in that? Right. And that's I, I honestly like started to do that again because I never set goals anymore. And I was just happy. Or I was I wasn't happy. I was, you know, you were comfortable. Comfortable. And I don't like being comfortable, man. I like being in uncomfortable situations. Um, that David Goggins book that I told you about, uh, he has a whole thing <clears throat> of like hashtagging discomfort zone. Like when you go run 10 miles, hashtag, yeah. di- you know, everyone wants to like curate like yes theory. this. Have you seen yes theory? Their, no. their motto is seek discomfort and they do a lot of things that make them uncomfortable. Like, and I remember back in the day when I started, you know, trying to get out of the, <laughs> coming out of the closet. No, I mean, you slept <laughs> in a fucking closet. That's yeah. the most uncomfortable place. And then period. I, and I went from there. And I signed my first brand deal, which was uh, a really big brand deal that gave me the opportunity to, you know, quit working for Logan. Curve Fragrances? Yeah, Curve. Yeah, Curve Fragrances. Shout out Curve. Baby. You guys changed my life. Um, but then I even put myself in another uncomfortable situation. Like, I got the I got the money. You would think, like, oh, cool, he'll get an apartment. And, like, no. I went for the most expensive apartment, which was, in hindsight, was dumb. But I wouldn't be where I was today if I didn't get that apartment because I, I paid $5,800 a month on my rent which is stupid. It's literally throwing away 70 grand. But I was like, fuck, I got to make- You could have like a nice, like three to four bedroom house. Right. A backyard. Not in LA. Yeah, (laughs) But I'm saying, (laughs) there's people listening to this in like Iowa. That's like, what the fuck? That's a year's rent, bro. And that's what I was thinking too. Like I'm from Ohio. I could buy the biggest house in my neighborhood with, you know, the money I had. Um, But not in LA. Like LA is a different story. But it forced me to like, I had to make 70 grand. That was a at 22 years old. Fuck. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I got the apartment when I didn't have enough money to pay for a year's rent. You know, it was like, I don't even know how I got approved, but I was like, damn, I really got to hustle. That's when I started posting all the time on YouTube, like every day. And then I started making Instagram skits every day. I was like, I got to, I got to pay. I got to, or I'm going home, you know, like my parents ain't going to be able to pay, pay this rent. So yeah, put myself in an uncomfortable situation. I read this, I read this quote today, uh, and I'm I'm gonna totally butcher this shit, but I don't care. Cause it really resonated with me. And it was like normal now is, you know, leaving your house at 7 a.m. to sit in your car for an hour and a half to get to a job so you can work for the car and the house, you know, so you can work for like eight or right. you know, eight to ten hours a day to pay for the car and the house that you're not in. Yeah. And I was like, oh my fucking God, that's crazy. Yeah, I never thought about that. <laughs> isn't isn't that insane? Yeah, I mean, it's so crazy. And look, I mean, that's just like, you know, for for you know, a lot of people, like that's just that's just what has to be done. And people have responsibilities. But what I like one thing that I mean, especially get, you know, someone like Gary Vaynerchuk talks about is if you're young, and for anybody who's listening to this right now who's who's young and maybe you live with your parents, take advantage of that shit. Yeah, yeah. Take all of your risks when you're young. Because when you're 30, when you're 35, when you're 40 and you have real responsibilities, it's going to be a thousand, a million times harder to, you know, start that dream thing that you've always wanted to try or to step out on a limb and take this opportunity that might not work out. Do it now. You have to, you got to do it while you're young. And that's what my dad always told me. He's like, take the risks now because like, yeah, what if I have a family? I can't take a risk. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't try to invest in something when I have to pay for my like wife and kids, you know what I'm saying? So like do that now. And then also my dad, he's the one that made me take the risk in coming out to here. Cause I, gra- I didn't even graduate college yet. I was taking online classes from the closet. I was sleeping in on an air mattress and driving this little fucking Honda Grom to CSUN, which was like 45 minutes away. The thing went 45 miles an hour. I'm on the highway, like six foot three on this tiny ass bike going 45. Everyone's Do you still have your motorcycle? Yeah, I got my you, motorcycle. Your Harley? Uh, I have an Indian. Now. Oh, an Indian. Okay. Um, uh, and yeah, I took the risk and I'm thankful that my parents were supportive of me and they told me to go do it because I had an opportunity. Uh, Logan gave me an opportunity and I couldn't pass that up because like my dad told me, my dad wanted to open up an ice cream shop when he was my age and he his dad wouldn't let him do it. And he's like, whatever, some other ice cream shop opened and they become a really successful ice cream chain in Akron. This is what he says. So he's like- But said, he still talks about it. He still talks about it. He's like, I don't want you when you're my age to regret the fact that you didn't move out to Los Angeles and try. So I got an opportunity 
and while I slept in a closet, like it was an opportunity and I, you know, made the most of it. And like now in 40 years, I could say like, I didn't make any, I don't have any regrets on like what I took a risk on, you know? hundred percent. I saw that you, uh, you were on some show on, I think it was on Snapchat called Internet Rich. Yeah, yeah. How is that weird? Like going on public record and being like, this is how I did everything. Uh, I think since I vlog and do podcasts, it's kind of out there. Um, I didn't like the title that it was called Internet Rich because like I'm not very flexy and like, like this is. I mean, like, the candy, the candy cane striped Range Rover. That was is, for a video, not, bro. Okay. <laughs> that was, I mean, that was my first big purchase was the Range Rover. And, I and as you should, man, you got to reward a, yourself. I'd never had a car and I like SUVs and I really like the touchscreen. So <laughs> <laughs> that's why you bought it. No you don't even go buy an iPad, bro. You know, I, they got iPads. <laughs> well, I was either going to get a Tesla or a Range Rover because of the touchscreen. And the Tesla was like, I, I hated the fact that the Tesla, when you took your foot off the gas, it slows down on its own. It's like a golf cart. Have you driven a Tesla? No. The only time I've, okay, I've been in a Tesla twice. Uh, my first time in a Tesla was with David Dobrik. Yeah. And he put it in the ludicrous mode. And- uh, What does that mean? Oh, you've never been in ludicrous mode? No. Oh, it just changes the acceleration. So you go from like zero to 60 in like two seconds. Whoa. Like, I mean, he punched that shit and it was like my face almost hit his fucking dashboard. Jesus. Um, and then the second time was that Tesla gave Madeline uh, a car for like a weekend. So you've never driven one. I've never driven one. No, I didn't want to drive the car that they lent her and like yeah, fuck yeah. it up. Um, but I'm about to get a new car. And, and you want a Tesla? You know, I, I really, I've, I've talked about this on the podcast before, but yeah, I've, I've been, really looking into getting a model X one because David has co-signed it so fucking yeah. heavy. He's like their biggest promoter. He's literally <laughs> like, he's probably like Elon's nephew or something. Yeah. And like, no one he knows has it stock yet. In the company. <laughs> yeah. He has like 50% of Tesla, yeah. like 49% of Tesla. Yeah. Um, That's the reason I checked out Tesla. Cause I saw his and he made it seem like it was the coolest car ever. And I just saw that he was in, um, he was somewhere for their unveiling of the model Y. Okay. And do you know why they have the model S the model they need to three, the, names, the model bro. X and the model Y. Why? Because when you sexy? line them all up, it was, yeah, se sexy. I hope they come up with some new names after. Because <laughs> it's hard to distinguish, you know, by fucking letters. Oh, totally. It's like Mercedes. Like they have the- CLK, GLK, CLS, yeah. CL. Yeah, all that shit. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm like in between what I'm going to get for a new car. And then part of me, you know, the Riverside kid in me is like- just spending that much on a car is crazy. Yeah. But uh, one, I want to save the environment. And two, if I don't have to go to a fucking gas station. Yeah. That would be nice. And you get tax benefits if you buy a yes. Tesla. Yes. And there's a touchscreen. Exactly. There's a and big, you can update the big touchscreen. And thing. the car farts. It, it has <laughs> whoopee cushion. Did you know that? No. Oh, yeah. You can like <laughs> enter this crazy mode and um, on the screen, every seat has a whoopee cushion on it. And you can press it and it'll just play random fart noises throughout the car. What the fuck? Elon Musk. You missed out, bro. You <laughs> like Range Rover doesn't fart. <laughs> You're all pissed. You write, you write them. A it goes over bumps well, but that's about <laughs> it. <laughs> um. So yeah, that those have been the two people that I've only experienced Teslas with. But uh, have you driven one? Yeah, I test drove one because I wanted to buy one. They're really fucking expensive, though. And you said it's it's like a golf cart. Yeah, because when you take your foot off the gas, it's electric and it slows down really fast. Whereas like if I take my foot off of a gas car, it like coasts, you yeah. know, but that one just like kind of breaks on its own almost. For a big thing for me is cause I have, you know, app, my Apple show, the beats one show is in Culver city. So that's like in like 45 minutes to an hour drive for me. So I, the auto drive thing is really appealing. But do you really trust that? No. And, that, <laughs> <laughs> and that's a big reason why I don't have one yet. Yeah. Um, and my buddy, he had, I think he had like one of the first, he had like first gen or second gen, but he had the autopilot on and it crashed into a fucking wall. Stop. Yeah. But here there's dude, there's, there's like butts with everything with Tesla, you know, but so yeah, it crashed into a wall. He's going like 60 miles an hour. He walked away without a scratch. Oh, okay. So they are, they're really fucking safe. Uh, yeah. But it's like an iPhone. You like, how often does your iPhone crash? Or oh, have all you, the time. You know? So it's like, it's technology. There could be a malfunction. There could be a bug, whatever. Yeah. Do you want to put like your life in this computer's hands? Right. But don't you think that's the way that the world's going? Automated everything? Yeah, of course. But don't you think that they'll turn against us? Like what? Like your Tesla, like you're like, I want to go home. Think about it, bro. If you're, if you're, have you seen uh live for your die hard? Wait, the Bruce Willis? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Were they like, you can control everything, bro. Like what if someone hacks all the software? 
every Tesla out there and they just start, they're like Tesla hard right turn right now. Oh my God. Bang. Everyone's flying off cliffs. Yeah. I never thought about that. I mean, if I'm on the 101, there's really no cliff I can get. Whatever. <laughs> but there's a huge accident. Or my thing is like those charging stations. It's like, what if everyone with a Tesla wants to go and charge it at that same time? You gotta go in for your house. Yeah. Yeah. And what if you're driving to Vegas and you can't find a charging station for 25 miles? You know how often I'm driving to Vegas? Every day. Yeah. <laughs> Huge gambler. You know, uh, I was going to get this, but uh, this is off limits for me. Yeah. I just I just commute to Vegas too, too much. much. <laughs> too fucking much. Oh, if man. you could live anywhere besides California, where would you live? Oh, man. I've been actually, I just followed this person on Instagram that lives in Utah. And they got a dope ass house. They have a dope view of the mountains. And it looks pretty sick. I like seasons. I like LA because it's always nice. But like, I'm from Ohio. So I really like to have seasons. I like seasons. Uh, like I want winter, I want fall. You I like want snow. Spring. Yeah. You want to it's experience cool. It. It's change. But I also feel like this because LA has been raining a lot. Yep. I feel so much happier when it's sunny. Yeah. Like, you holy feel like you shit. have, uh, what is it? Po uh, what the fucking post seasonal disorder or whatever it is. I don't know. But like, I'm like, damn, I wonder if I was depressed about my content because the weather was shitty. <laughs> Weather has a huge impact on this me. This vlog sucks. Yeah. Because it's great. <laughs> no, no, yeah, it was bad weather for a while. Anytime people are like, oh, I love when it rains. It just puts me in the best mood. I don't trust them. I, I like when it rains on occasion. So it's like you have a reason to like stay inside and watch Netflix. Yeah, but like consecutive, like I can never live in like Seattle. No, 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 no. And no. my girlfriend, she shoots up in Vancouver and it'll be like 80 degrees and sunny and then like 3 p.m. rolls around and it'll start raining out of nowhere. That's crazy. They shoot a lot of movies in Vancouver. Dude, they're shooting everything up there. Everything. It's, it's fucking of, crazy. I think the taxes, right? You get a tax break up there. And um, for L.A., if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, the only, the only tax benefits you get in LA is if the show is about LA and takes wow. place, not, not about LA, but takes place yeah. in Los Angeles. You can't cheat it as another city. Exactly. Um, and Vancouver is great because, you know, they have a huge downtown area. You can kind of make it look like. They cheat it for every city. Wherever you want. Deadpool, Deadpool shot up there. Um. I mean, they, they shoot fucking literally everything. That's crazy. And it's crazy because they have stages set up. So they just went and bought these, you know, industrial like compounds and they built they stages, build stages there. Yeah. So they don't shoot on location? They, I mean, sometimes, yeah, it depends. Like, you know, if it's like a, it's so crazy walking on. Cause that's what I thought. Like when I first, you know, went up there, I thought like, okay, your house is going to be some house that we go to yeah, and it's yeah. just empty. And like, you know, you walk into this, just this like compound, it's just this concrete building and it's like the interior of a high school and there's like lockers and a is principal's office. Has that been office. like that from the start or did they yeah, actually use yeah. the real? Oh, wow. Um, and then sometimes I'll go to set with her and we'll be at a real high school because they need some, you know, pickup of like a football field or something like that. So it really, it really, ver or they'll shoot an exterior of a real house, you know, like they'll be on the porch right, of a right. real house and then you'll walk onto the stage and it'll be like the bedroom. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a mind fuck. What I don't like, I mean, I don't like the fact that, all right. So like, yeah, you get this job. It's really dope. But they're like, yeah, you got to move to Vancouver. You know, like, like, what do you do when you're not like shooting? That, I don't like that either. You got what do you do when you're shoot, like not shooting? You have to have two places. Yeah. Like, no one's going to live in Vancouver for no reason. Or you just, you know, you become really good friends with your cast. Your cast becomes a family. Yeah. And you know, you hang out. No, I'm saying in terms of like, say, oh, when you're, oh, when you, when, when the season's over, when the season's over, then it's like, all right, you have your rent in Vancouver and now you have rent in Los Angeles, you know? Yep. And uh, I'm really excited because River, they're, they're almost done shooting. So she'll be coming home soon. So then um, what's, what happens to her place in Vancouver? She's uh, just sublease? No, 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 no. I, think that, I don't know. So she'll keep that there. Yeah, probably. And then have to come back here. Yep. And then have to go back there and have to come back it's here. It's a job, man. It's a job. Where's home? It's a job. <laughs> um, yeah, and she's been talking, we've been talking about getting another puppy that she can take like, oh, you know, geez. up there with her. That's a great idea. I just got back from Vancouver, actually. I was there too. I was there not this last weekend, but the weekend before. Um, and yeah, it was it was gorgeous. It's crazy because obviously they shoot a lot of movies here, but I was just in Atlanta doing something with Will Smith and they're shooting Bad Boys 3 in Atlanta. Of course. Yeah. And uh, I think someone from her show is is on that film as well. What did you go do with Will Smith? Because I saw all those posts. Yeah. He, uh, 
he's got this new Facebook show and I have a really good relationship with Facebook and they asked me to come down to see the premiere of it, the bucket list. So went out there, did some really cool things. We went to the Porsche place, Porsche. Sorry. That's how you say it. Um, you race some Porsches. Yeah. We did some test course stuff. Like they took us through maneuverability. Like they would kick out the back wheels and you have to recover like some really cool shit. Like, like sliding, drifting, all that. It was, it was really dope. Did you like pull emergency brakes and shit? No, no, you don't. So oh. when you drift, you're just, you're slamming on the brake? It's a, uh, oh, I'd have to remember how you do it. But yeah, because those cars that we were on were automatic. So I was, you weren't like. Shifting and all that. No, no, you were, it was something. You the, weren't the, been dieseling it? No, no. <laughs> I'm not a car expert, so I don't even want to butcher this. Well, what's crazy about that show Bucket List is that's, I mean, he started a YouTube channel to do all that. Yeah, and I had, a, I, it was, it was honestly the coolest trip ever. And I had like a 45 minute conversation with him one-on-one. -on -one. Never in my life did I think I would have this conversation with, with Will him. Smith. With Will Smith. Super dope guy. Also a Libra. I'm a Libra. Shout out to all the Libras. Uh, we just relate, like we were like the same person, like the way we were talking and just like our mindset and everything. I got to ask him some really cool questions and get super personal and such a great dude, man. Do you remember like the one thing that you asked him? Well, I asked him a several questions. I asked him about how did he humble himself to do social media? Because I was like, you're this, this big actor, you've done it all, you've done music, you've done TV, you've done film. And like, you had to start at zero to do social media. How were you able to humble yourself and start from scratch? Damn, that's a great question. And he was like, honestly, man, it was so easy for me because I've had to do it so many times before. He's like, I started his music and then I went to TV. Like that was a start over. And then I went from TV to movies. That was a start over. And then movies to social media it was just a start over. He's just like, is a fucking genius in shifting like to whatever content he has to do. And like, like I said, super humble guy. And, and I'm not, I don't want to get too much into our conversation because we talked about some personal stuff, but like he taught me a lot about myself. And it was during the time when I was of course, in, a, yeah. in a pit. And that was, I read the subtle art of not giving a fuck on the way there. Nice. So to me, it sounds like he's a veteran in being uncomfortable. Yeah. Like he has no problem, you know, rolling his sleeves up and doing something that he's not used to. Yeah. Which that's a hard thing to do for some people. The, and sorry, go ahead. The coolest thing I think that he told me was he, he like, cause I, I learned that I stopped learning. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I became, since I was successful, I became this, I know it all, you know, I don't need to learn shit. And he kind of instilled in me like that you can learn every single day. And he said he even learned from his daughter because she had that hit song like Whip My Hair Back and Forth. Yep. And then I guess- Willow she, Smith. Yeah, Willow Smith. And then I guess she like told him like, hey, yeah, dad, I don't really want to do this anymore. And he's like, what do you mean? Like, you, yeah, yeah, this is great. Like, you, have, you got a hit song? Yeah, like, what do you mean you don't want to do this? She's like, I just don't want to. And he's like, that taught me like, I, oh, I forget what he said, man, but he was like, he, he learned from his daughter in the sense of like, you don't have to always do things that you don't want to do or like don't have to listen to what other people think about you. And you can kind of just pave your own path. You know what I'm saying? Like stop worrying about what other people want for you and start focusing on what you want for yourself. Damn. Yeah, if Will Smith told me that, I don't know what I'd do. Oh, it was such a cool conversation. I'd Shout out Will it. Smith. I'd, frame, I'd hand write it and then I'd frame it. Yeah, I got a picture <laughs> with him. It was awesome. Yeah. That's cool, incredible, dude. man. Yeah. I'm not like a, I've met a lot of celebrities. I'm not like a guy that's like, whoa, celebrity. No, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, But it was cool because most celebrities you meet, it's like a, yo, what's up? Like, oh, nice to meet you, man. I love your stuff. That's the end of it. And he was actually invested and had a real conversation. Like at any point he could have been like, yo, man. I'm super busy. I'm super. I got to promote my show. Like I got to talk to all these other people. But nah, he sat there and he talked to me and I was like, I fucking love this dude. <laughs> yeah. That's incredible, man. Um, and then you said that you were on set last week. What were you shooting? Oh, I hosted a show, uh, a Facebook live game show called Confetti. Nice. And I was the Weren't host. you giving away money? Yeah. lots. I don't know how they do it, man. Facebook's got a fuckload of money. <laughs> They're like 5,000 a day, 10,000 tomorrow, 20,000 the next day, 50,000. Like where the fuck's all this money going? Jesus. And, um, and what's the game show? It was just like, uh, 10 questions and you answer the questions right and you get to share the prize. Were they like, were they They're hard questions? Hard? Yeah, okay. yeah. Damn. Yeah. I want to. Well, like you could sit on your phone for 20 minutes, play this game and make a hundred bucks. Do you see yourself doing a lot more of that in the future? Yeah. I've been actually going out for a lot of hosting gigs. Dope. Um, cause it's just second nature for me. Cause I went to college for it. So it's kind of easy, I guess, to improv and do that. So 
a lot of auditions actually have been hosting related. So that's awesome, man. Yeah. Dope dude. Well, yo, uh, we just did almost an hour. It was a fast hour. I know. Right. Yeah. We can go forever. Um, you gotta let me, I want to come back and do your podcast again. Yeah. We I'll have you that. on. Yep. Uh, why don't you tell everyone to check where to check you out? You guys can check out on my, hey. <laughs> you can check out my podcast. It's youtube.com backslash living large podcast. Uh, I post once a week, every single Wednesday. I've had Travis on. You guys can check out his episode. Very first episode. Yeah. Scroll, very, get to scrolling. Number one. And then on the gram, Mark Donor. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, if you guys want to get some ADHD merch, like that coffee mug that uh, that's over on Mark's side, I didn't get to have it today. Or yeah. some cool hoodies and sweatpants. Go to fanjoy.co slash ADHD. And then he'll have to stop, or then he'll stop doing ad reads. Yeah. <laughs> Buy merch and, and I'll stop selling ads on my podcast. Uh, as always, thank you guys so much. If you're listening, subscribe, rate the podcast five stars. If you're watching, thank you so much. Make sure you subscribe. Comment down below so I know you watched it uh, and I could talk to you for a little bit. I love you guys. I will see you next week. Peace out.